Welcome back to Spacecraft Guide, the channel that describes how historic and the most complex spacecraft in history worked. This episode will show the switches we completed this week and a video description on how the eight ball really works and how they are related. But first, here is what we worked on in this past week. We concentrated on panel three again, and specifically on the attitude control roll switch, the attitude control pitch switch, and the attitude control yaw switch. If you would like to learn more about these switches, just click on them like this, and they will take you to a description on the component. The description will cover the switch itself, general, where in the manual where the system of this component is a part of, non-normal operations, which is where you find directions on what to do when the component is not working correctly, normal operations, how to work the component normally, schematics, a drawing of the system and the component and how it works within the system, and limitation, where the component fails. The flight director attitude indicator, FDAI, is a display of the spacecraft's orientation as it moves through space. It gets its information from gyros that make up the stable platform in the IMU, which measures the angles in between the gimbals. To see how the stable platform works, see our last episode on gimbal lock. The FDAI is not like a mechanic mechanical attitude indicator as it has no internal gyro. With one glance, the astronaut can tell in an instant the orientation of his craft. Not only can see if he is right side up, but they can tell the amount of pitch, roll, and yaw. You can even tell if you were getting into a dangerous situation like gimbal lock. That leads me to the question on the F, uh, FDAI I got from Dave Jones from Australia. Dr. Jones has flown small aircraft and was asking about the FDAI reference for pitch when the Saturn V was on the launch pad. He asks, quote, so where does the attitude indicator start from. I would assume as the vertical is pointing at the sky, it would show purely white. Dr. Jones is correct. The FDI would show completely white. The orientation would be pitch 90 degrees, yaw 0 degrees, roll 90 plus azimuth, which is 72 degrees, which comes to a total of 162 degrees at liftoff. Great question. If you have a question, send it to me in, your, in the comments and I'll see if I can find the answer. And take a look at those VR games to make sure they are correct. So that leaves us with the connection between the pitch wrong and your attitude control switches and this week's video. The connection between the roll, pitch, and yaw switch for the attitude, attitude control switch is that they control the thrusters to keep the orientation of the spacecraft that was displayed on the eight ball. These thrusters kept the command module positioned in flight to the moon and kept Apollo 13 out of gimbal lock when one of its O2 tanks exploded. One last correction I have to make on the, the episode on last week on gimbal lock. I said it took all three, three gimbals to align to get gimbal lock. As you can see, the gimbal lock is when the middle 
gimbal angle exceeds plus or minus 70 degrees from its zero position. If it reached 90 degrees, then it would align with the inner or outer gimbal. Therefore, only two gimbals would need to almost align to cause gimbal lock. Thanks, Apollo Flight Journal, for pointing this out. That's all for this week. If you would like to see more videos like these, please subscribe, like, and tell all your friends. I will try to put out a video every week. And if you really like these videos, please get, become a subscriber to our Patreon page, which has interactive virtual reality exhibits on the Apollo spacecraft. It also has bonus videos of the week's episodes on the eight ball and how SpaceX uses imageries to simplify system displays and a free bonus International Space Station docking simulator that you can see this week. Thank you for your support.